All right, in this uh, short tutorial, I'm going to talk about laying out your geometry for laser cutting. Um, this is a follow-on to a couple previous videos that have to do with creating a waffle model of an arbitrary uh, shape. And um, in the previous videos, uh, in addition to slicing up the geometry into ribs, uh, we also uh, created notches uh, for the ribs to fit together to allow the ribs to fit together once they're laser cutted. Um, okay, so since the last video, I went through and I made sure that there were notches placed at every intersection. And I will tell you that I did not copy all 576 of these notches myself. I used a plugin you may have heard of called Grasshopper to make that nice and easy. And so it took me just a couple minutes to propagate all of those. So uh, pay attention, um, I'm going to eventually probably do some grasshopper tutorials, so uh, it's worth learning, save you some time. All right, so what I'm going to do here now is start to lay these out for laser cutting. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and create a rectangle that represents the size of my laser cutting bed. Uh, and in our case at Ball State, that is... Um, a maximum of uh, 32 inches by 18 inches. And um, I'm actually going to rotate that. Okay. So we can definitely fit a lot of ribs on there. Um, although uh, for, uh, two, um, for two of our laser cutters, uh, it's actually 24 by 18. So you may want to just plan on that if you don't know which machine you're going to be able to get on. Okay, but in any case, uh, now the goal is to arrange these in this space, and that process is called nesting, uh, so that they can be uh, cut out from your material. And uh, what you're going to want to do is have a way of noting which rib is which, because once you get these on your um, on your laser cut uh, surface, you're going to have trouble um, identifying them. So to do that, I'm going to create a numbering system, and I'm going to use the text object tool. Now, uh, since I don't want to have to rotate the text for each one of these, uh, since by default it's going to create um, my geometry on the current construction plane, which is where, which is identified by the grid, I'm actually going to change my construction plane. Now, uh, this can be confusing, but uh, it can be really useful too if you know what you're doing. So, there's um, an option under the view uh, drop down here where you can set the C plane. C plane stands for construction plane. And there's some default options here. And uh, we can try those. Um, some of these here, like world top, world right, world front, these are correspond to the um, construction planes that are associated with these other tabs down here. So I can take advantage of that and just grab world right, for instance. And you'll see what happened now. It created a construction plane that is perpendicular uh, to the one that's by default, the uh, the world x y plane, um, and that will serve me nicely for this set of of ribs and labeling them. So um, what I'm going to do here uh, is start by uh, using the text object tool, and I'm just going to uh, type in what my numbering is going to be. And so for the top, I'll say that the top is um, layer A for the top. And then I'm going to give it a number for the first rib. And for this uh, text object, I want to make sure and use a single stroke font, uh, because otherwise you're going to uh, waste a lot of time waiting for the laser cutter to outline every letter. Uh, with a single stroke font, it can just draw the, the single strokes required to complete the letter, and that's going to save you a lot of time. Now, you have to use a single stroke font for that, and there's one that you can download from uh, the Rhino website, and it's this 
Mexoft font, and you can uh, oops, you can uh, find that if you Google uh, Rhino single stroke font or Rhino engraving font, uh, and you can install that and uh, use that when you're generating your uh, your numbering, and uh, you'll see it looks kind of weird here. Don't worry about that. Once it creates the text object, it'll look fine. Um, but before I do that, I want to change the size here. And since I want it to fit inside my rib, I'm going to change the height to quarter of an inch. And, and then I also want to group my objects, because otherwise it will um, have the separate lines uh, for each part of each letter, and I don't want that. Okay, so now when I create this, you'll see that it has created uh, this A1 number, and it's single stroke. You can see that it's just single lines for each uh, letter or character. And you can see that it is uh, created in relation to, or in the uh, same plane or, or parallel plane to, actually it is actually the construction plane. So you can see how uh, it helps to uh, change the construction plane, because otherwise uh, it would be creating them flat on the XY plane, and I'd have to rotate each one. So uh, this will allow me to place this. Now it's kind of disorienting because I actually, you know, I want to place it behind the construction plane for this, um, but it won't jump to that position until I actually uh, line it up with the given rib using the object snap here. Um, so that that can be a little awkward, but you could reposition it later. Um, so I'm actually going to cancel that because I want to uh, make it even smaller than what I had because it's looking too big. So I'll make it an eighth of an inch, and then I will uh, place that there. And then I'll go, go through and do that for each of these uh, so that all of my ribs are labeled. And uh, that shouldn't take too long because there's only 12 of these. So, But that's how I would label those. And then uh, once I'm done with those, I would switch to uh, switch my um, construction plane now to world front, which is going to shift it perpendicular or at a right angle to that previous plane or construction plane. And now I can place uh, my letters for the other dimension or my other direction. And I'm going to call those D1, etc. Don't need to change any other options. And now I can just, well, it looks like it's backwards here. So I'm just going to twirl around and place those here somewhere. So now I can just go through and place these real quick. All right. So once you have those, that's going to be uh, really useful then for placing these on your sheet and well, the order doesn't matter too much, but it could uh, help you. It could save you some time if you place them in order as well. Um, so I'm going to propagate those numbers on the rest of these ribs, and then we'll get back to placing them on the uh, laser cut area. Okay, so now I have propagated all of those numbers for, for the uh, bottom layer uh, to each rib. And um, now I can start arranging them on this sheet. But before I do that, I actually want to take advantage of the fact that my geometry is grouped right now, and I can uh, place it on appropriate layers. So what I've done here is I've created separate layers uh, that reflect each of the different types of geometry here. And uh, then I can, I can set them up with uh, the appropriate colors for that, since our Laser cutter uh, cuts has a certain order for the colors of the lines that it cuts. So the first one uh, is uh, black, and followed by red, and then blue is later down in the list. Uh, but I want to I want to do my engraving first. So my cuts that identify, or my my etching that identifies my ribs, and then I want to do the notches that uh, I'll be cutting out. Uh, followed lastly by the ribs, and the reason to do it in that order is that the ribs, um, since the ribs will result, since cutting the ribs will re result in 
um, the entire rib coming free from your material, assuming you have the right settings for the laser cutter, um, I want to uh, make sure that my rib, or sorry, my notches are going to be uh, show up precisely where they should, and it's possible if I uh, cut the ribs out first, they could be dislodged, um, and then the notches, if there's a cut after that, could end up in the wrong position. So it's safest to do um, interior geometry uh, before final cutout geometry. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and arrange all of that. So my notches, which I grouped uh, previously, I'm going to move those to this layer. And there's a handy little function here uh, that set that when I right click on the layer, that's called change object layer. And that moves all of those to that layer. And then there is, uh, I want to just want to do the same thing for the ribs, just to a different layer. Change object layer. And then I actually I created a separate layer for the text, and I did not group those. So I'll need to do that now. Uh, and there's a real quick way to do that. I just need to, I can select everything here and uh, deselect everything else that's grouped. So all I'm left with is my numbering. And then I'll group that and move that to the text layer here. Change object layer. Okay. So now, um, now that I have moved everything to the right layers, I want to uh, remove the grouping because now the grouping is going to change. So I'll ungroup. Now uh, all of these things are separate. Now uh, notice here that these stayed grouped, and that's because they were a part of another group. So it just ungrouped the larger group, but these stay grouped, which is kind of handy. Now the other thing that I want to do before I start moving these layers is actually get rid of this uh, placement geometry, because that is not something that we want to cut out. Um, so actually I'm going to go back and undo my ungroup so that I can select all of those real easy and delete them. And now I will go back and ungroup everything. And then I'm going to start group regrouping these uh, for placement. So group uh, ungroup. Now I can uh, start to group these individual uh, ribs with the associated geometry for each. And uh, it'll be easiest to do this just by grabbing one of them one by one here, uh, hitting group, and then subsequent uh, ribs. I can just right click to group and um, just do that for each one so that once I'm done, I can just go in here and grab uh, one of these ribs and it's going to come with all of its geometry and then I can put that in place all at once and not have to worry about making sure all the geometry comes with it. So um, once I have grouped all of these, uh, the next step would be to, um, you could either take and rotate each one or you could rotate the entire group at once to get them in the right orientation. If I do that this way, then it's just a matter of grabbing those groups here and moving them and using my object snap I can just start snapping them to this geometry. Uh, and I'm going to turn on my near snap uh, so that I can just place them here along the, the edge and just I'll just move these all into all into place here and then I'll rearrange them later after I've gotten them all on the same plane. Alright so I'm going to jump ahead here yeah, so we can talk about that. All right, so now I've placed most of these ribs, and um, now I need to think about uh, placement on my sheet for laser cutting. Um, so now is where uh, I can get by with just kind of dragging and placing because they're on the right plane now, and I don't need to worry about them shifting to the wrong plane or anything like that. Um, so uh, this process of nesting... Uh, you want to try and you know maximize your material and uh, this is where it would be nice if you could get away with smaller notching geometry or if you went ahead and trimmed your notching geometry and that wouldn't be that difficult I mean if we you would probably want to do this before you group everything but if I just to demonstrate I could uh, trim these notches pretty easily uh, just by selecting this as my trim geometry and then going in and 
you know, selecting each of these notches. And what that's going to do then is it's going to limit the those cuts to um, to the part that is contained within the geometry. And once I've completed that, now that gives me more room to move this into place. Now it's going to be impossible to to conserve. I mean, you'll, you're going to waste material, unfortunately, in this approach. Uh, but uh, you can maximize it um, and, you know, play around with rotating uh, your ribs and things like that so that you can squeeze them together a little bit more. Um, and so that's the process of, of uh, setting up your sheet. And you'll just have to do, uh, you'll have to do the same with the opposing ribs. And since you are etching out your... Um, the numbers as well uh, should be shouldn't have any trouble identifying them, and uh, and then once you've got that done, um, I would go through the process that uh, we have outlined on the website for um, laser cutting, and um, you'll have the link for that here in a second. Thanks for watching.